So, if we then sense to ourselves, okay, well, how do we deepen our attention? I think the inquiry that's really helpful in any moment is, how in this moment am I creating separation? How in this moment? Because if we ask that, we can just honestly sense in ourselves that way that we're getting identified with our ego. So how do we then begin to really look? And uh, I'll, I'll share an example of how we can use this mindfulness, this attentiveness um, in action. And the example is a, a woman, uh, this was several years ago. She uh, was calling me for phone sessions. <laughs> New York, and she said, you know, that her parents had dementia, and she called me because she had just had a, a crisis where they changed their will, and um, they got, it wasn't vindictive towards her, they were just confused, but they changed their will in a way that really left her very, very threatened financially. And, and when she heard it, when they talked about it or she saw it, she called them up and she flew into a rage. And she said, I was bewitched. I mean, I was, I was in a rage. I used words like stupid, don't give a shit. You know, she just was, she went absolutely nuts. And, um, you know, and, and we talked. It's like, how many of us have lost it and felt, you know, afterwards that, that sense of remorse or astonishment at how whacked we can get. You know, when we lose temper with our children or get suspicious of our partner or jealous of someone, you know. We can go crazy. So for this woman, then her next step of trance, first she's completely, you know, in this rage reaction and then she turned it on herself. You know, it's like, I'm bad. I I'm evil. I, you know, how could I do these, you know, her parents are in dementia. How could she do that? So bad self. So she was both the victim and the aggressor. Okay, we're, again, we're looking at the identification with the mask. She was caught in both of them, and she had no. And when she's in that, she couldn't see her parents as anything but the enemy, as you know, some sort of um, you know stupid and uh, weak and uh, you know messed up people in some way. So you might be thinking, well, that might sound like a trance, but in fact, she was greatly threatened by what happened, you know, and she also acted in ways that were aggressive and hurtful. So, I'd like to remind at this point uh, uh, us of uh, Sokni Rinpoche has a very powerful set of words which is real but not true. That it's real that her parents were in dementia and it's real that they would do things that could cause her heartache and insecurity and it's real that her ego felt incredibly threatened and went into rage so that's all real but the trance is the, out of the interpretations we make I'm bad, you're bad, this is me, this is you does that make sense? it's real the feelings are real, even the beliefs we're having are real beliefs but they're not true, the content the interpretations aren't true. And we go into trance when we believe it, when we take it personally. So for her, and this is, you know, this is all about how do we see past the mask, all the conditioning, she, you know, was very committed to deepening her attention, to asking that question, you know, how am I creating separation from myself? How am I creating separation from my parents? And so she, she asked herself, what am I believing? And what she was believing is they don't care. That was one of her beliefs. You know, even though she knew that they were confused and in dementia, her belief in her body, you know, how she felt, they don't care. And her other belief was, I'm bad. I'm just a bad person, nasty person. So her process was to sense those beliefs you know, I'm not, the belief I'm not worth caring about, I'm bad. And then feeling how she was carrying them and then starting to feel this grief about living in this narrowed world. I'm bad, you're bad kind of world. And that grief, that presence with the pain of it and the, the grief started softening the trance. 
as soon as we touch into sorrow, a kind of a soul sadness, we're beginning to enlarge. There's moisture, there's softening, there's opening. And for her, she was able to sense, oh, this is really painful, start having compassion for herself. So there's a shifting in identity here from being identified as the victim and aggressor to the space of compassion that cares. That's the shift. And from that shift, so she was just as with the lowly lady is what they call the Dam Ragnell, just as Sir Gawain could see that that real, the bleary, behind the bleary eyes, that pain, she started seeing that in herself and she could see it in her parents, their confusion, their disorientation. Shifted to compassion. So that's the first seeing, seeing the vulnerability. And then from that space, she could again remember, I love them. That's seeing the goodness. As soon as you remember you love someone, you're reconnecting with your goodness. And then she could look at them at who she was loving and see their dearness. And then in that space that opened up, in that sensing the goodness and the dearness, there was just a quality of being, of being present, of their being, of her being. And, and, and again, this is what I mean by soul recognition. There's a kind of attention that begins to see through the mask to the vulnerability, to the goodness, and to the beingness. For this woman, that seeing enabled her to then talk in a way that over the next month she could straighten things out. She was coming from a place of um, intelligence and sanity and balance so she could communicate. Um, but what was important to her was seeing the possibility of seeing past the mask. Because when you learn to pause, and sense, okay, there's a trance going on here. What's really happening? How am I creating separation? How am I identified? You begin to have the possibility of connecting in a way with others that is filled with love and filled with creativity and filled with spontaneity because you're not relating from ego to ego. So, We'll practice a little as a way to close, but I just want to say that this, this, the word soul recognition, if they don't resonate for you, there are many other ways of languaging this, but what we're really talking about is seeing who we are. As the, the Bantu tribesmen put it, you know, when they put, there's this description of putting children to sleep in a hut and going to each one and saying, be who you are. Be who you are. Be who you are. That this is the possibility that we can pause and deepen our attention and see who we are and live from that and invite that in others. One of my first mentors uh, in, in psychotherapy had a, uh, his practice was he, with each client, he would just sit and, and, and be with them and his first and deepest intention was to see the divine. And he was more from Christian orientation, to see the sacred shining through. And he said, and it didn't make him less savvy about the patterning. In fact, he was able to see the patterning with a lot of clarity and work with people with their, with their patterning. But what made the healing possible? He was holding it in the space of seeing who they were, calling that forward, mirroring that. What a gift we can give each other when we look and we see that. So let's practice just for a few minutes and then we'll close for the evening. If you want to have this reflection be a, an alive one, uh, you might just feel your intention right now 
to see past whatever trance is here, to see who you are truly. See past the mask of ego and to move through the world with this capacity of soul recognition, just to feel your intention. You might begin by bringing to mind somebody you care about. It could be somebody you know well or maybe somebody you care about from more of a distance, it's okay. But sense that person here as if you could just really uh, call them into presence right here. See if you could look into that person's eyes. Just sense in this person that universal vulnerability or insecurity that we all share. How this being like yourself has fears of failure, fears of loss. Can, can feel doubt or mistrust about his or her okayness. So you just sense that vulnerability. And then the second way of seeing is to sense that being's goodness. What he or she looks like when she's feeling love and expressing love. the eyes, what he or she's like when really relaxed, when happy. So you can sense the goodness, the aliveness. To sense behind any particular quality, just that sentience that the same beingness that's looking out through your eyes looks out through that person's eyes, that shared beingness. This, like the Bantu tribesmen, you might just sense that prayer, be who you are, may you live from that wholeness. Imagine being with that person and really letting them know their goodness, calling it out. You might bring to mind somebody you encounter regularly but go into kind of a judgmental trance. This will be a little more challenging. You really get caught in judgment. So this is an opportunity to see if you can see past the mask a little. Sense that person's vulnerability. What that person might be afraid of, how that person might feel hurt insecure, confused. So you can sense that what it is you're judging is in some way trying to, their way of trying to protect themselves.
Let's see if you can look past the mask to the goodness this person wants to love and be loved, wants to be happy. That heart wants to be free. And in the deepest way, sense that who's looking out through those eyes, that consciousness is none other than your own. It's the same beingness that lives through you. And again, that prayer, be who you are. May you know and trust and live from your wholeness. Bringing your attention to yourself, sensing what it's like when you are in that judgmental trance. Or when you're caught in trance in any way, grim at work or irritable with children or caught in an addiction or having to be right, controlling, whatever it is. Can you see past that mask, that identity? Can you sense your own vulnerability? You might feel it right now. Just feel your heart, your throat or belly, and just sense the, there's some, often the sense of some apprehension about what might go wrong. What's wrong with me? What's around the corner? Just to sense the human vulnerability inside you and to sense the goodness to sense your sincere yearning to wake up, to spiritually wake up, to love without holding back, to live from your wisdom, from your heart. So that's part of soul recognition, to sense that goodness in you. And in the most basic way, sense the beingness that's here. Just this innate wakefulness, awareness. <sighs> Be who you are. You might sense your own prayer, may I live from the truth and wholeness and love and awareness that's here. We'll end with uh, the words of Hafez, as translated by Daniel Ladins Ladinsky. One day the sun admitted, I am just a shadow. I wish I could show you the infinite incandescence that had cast my brilliant image. I wish I could show you, when you are lonely or in darkness, the astonishing light of your own being. So blessings, namaste, and thank you for your attention.